posted um, to the event page and our Facebook page uh, after the session. I want to thank also our many generous sponsors and partners for helping us to bring events like this to light. We could not do it without you. Um, we are grateful for our presenting sponsors and all the others who are very gracious in their donations of uh, monetary support to bring things like this, uh, our live streaming and in other in-person programming. Part of the mission of Cleveland Krantvania is to promote Slovenian culture and every year we strive to both bring together the community and explore the question, what does it mean to be Slovenian? We hope that events like today help bring together stronger connections where there may not have been a previous opportunity to do so and bring people to a closer meaning of our shared cultural heritage. Thank you again to all who have made this day possible. We are a volunteer organized event and I want to invite all of you um, to consider participating as a volunteer in our organizing. We have many volunteer positions. We're doing two hour volunteer signups online. And if you wish to take a greater uh, step towards helping organize events like this, I invite you to um, look at our open and available organizing community uh, positions. And again, we're a team of about 20 or so volunteer organizers who are all just banding together to try and make grassroots events like this possible for the community. Um, I want to now introduce our speaker today, Dave Antoline. Dave is a Slovenian Canadian who graduated from the University of Toronto, and his interest in Slovenian folklore started at a very young age, where he um, continued the folklore tradition and interests of his family, studying culture and design in various French and Italian universities, along with many in Slovenia. His focus to traditional folklore became the basis of programming of various folk ensembles, such as Socha and VENDC in Ontario, Canada, and many other groups that he has helped in North America and Slovenia. Some of you in attendance today may have worked with Dave with Folklorna Skupina Krias, who he has also, uh, over the last several decades, been helping assist with as well. Uh, let's see here. Dave uh, is... I would just cut to the chase. He is a folklore costuming expert and ha is an expert in folk dance as well. And we are tremendously honored for his presence here today. He's come all the way down from Canada um, to bring to us this information and knowledge, and we could not be more thrilled or honored. And without greater, th greater ado, I introduce to you Dave Antoline. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Overwhelmed, that's all I can really tell you. I'm very overwhelmed. Um, thank you, Nicole. Thank you to uh, Quidditch Vanya for the invite. Um, Nicole and I were um, chatting last year. Actually, people with Quidditch Vanya were chatting even before Quidditch Vanya started. Um, and then the whole event started, and year two I came. Um, you may not have known me then. Um, I was one of the Quidditch that was going down. <laughs> but, but I'm going to tell you, I brought my own. <laughs> And that was the last time he's actually used. Unfortunately, um, he's had to be retired, a little tattered and torn, but it was so well, well worth it. And uh, one of my sons actually got to come as well. And um, I, had a, I was planting a seed, let's put it that way. I would love to bring a group of masks for Kurentovanya one year. And uh, it's going to happen. So there we go. Anyways, Nicole asked me to, uh, if I could do a chat. I had to hum and haw and ponder about it. And well, here I am. So. Um, this is a passion. Um, I think um, many people will call it an obsession. Um, so today, I'm going to give you maybe the grassroots. I was hoping to give you about 30 slides. I will not bore you with all 209. <laughs> um, there are 209. I'm not joking. Um, but I, will, I may skim through some. I may just kind of skip others. And then when we adjourn, if you have any questions, I might just go back to them if there's something that you want to see in particular. Um, it's really hard to talk about costuming um, in general in two, well, in an hour. I mean, uh, I always joke that I could do a lecture series at a university, but who's going to study costuming, right? And, and right? But uh, um, I think Nicole's uh, email to me yesterday as we were, you know, packing to come uh, to the U.S. was, um, it got scary. Um, be that a, I'm a secondary school teacher, um, I kind of got into that because of the because I taught folklore, and um, 
and it's a passion, it's an obsession too. It's a bit of a, it, it, it's, it's a bit kooky as well. And you've got to find, I'm a pretty laid back presenter, I'm a pretty laid back teacher as well. Um, and for me, that's what works, right? I'm not just here we go and you know, regurgit or regurgitate information. So there are things that I may be mentioning to you, um, and then actually I forget, so if somebody wants to point something out, and that's A-OK -okay as well. Um, and I might be testing you out uh, in regards, so don't worry, I'm not, there's no test at the end, but I may be asking you what your thoughts are, are, are on something. Um, but back to when Nicole said, she goes, we have a sellout crowd, and I literally went, oh, OK. I thought it was going to be five people, myself, Nicole, around a table, and we're going to chat. And uh, apparently, um, I even got some emails from Slovenia and from people that I didn't know in Slovenia, or pardon me, people that I didn't know knew about it, and they said, we're listening to your talk. So good morning, good day, good evening, and you know, dobro jutro, dobro dan, dobro večer, right? Um, so people all over the place. I mean, it, it's so nice to see that people are interested in something that, that might be near and dear to me, and it might be near and dear to you, and seeing some of the old, old things that come out, People have actually told me as well, they have some black and whites at home. Don't worry, I'll send you an email. If, you, if you're if you okay with it, send it to me. I would gladly, honestly, check it out. A lot of the things that I show are treasures. And because I deal with folklore, those treasures are things that can be reconstructed. We can actually remake them to the best of our ability with what we have now. We can't reconstruct things the way they were. We can't find materials and the techniques that people used to do are long gone. And those seamstresses that are here, or tailors that are here, consider this. If somebody asked you to make a nosha, and they said, we want you to smock, right? We want you to gather the skirt. You would say, oh, I don't do that. I machine gather. Some of you understand what that means. Smocking will take you days and hours, possibly, right? Um, machine gathering, oh, I'm done, right? So it's how you take it, right? I'm not going to force you to do one way or the other, but I'm going to tell you that I have some reconstructions <laughs> for um, the dance group Socha that I, that I taught in Venice. Well, Socha actually has um, costumes that are almost 35, 40 years old, and they look brand new. If the, everything's made correctly and taken care of, you have generations. So as I digress, and I've also told people, I have ADD, so you're going to know that real quick. <laughs> All right, so we're going to talk about Slovensko Lutska Nosha, and hopefully I can get my act together here and in, in getting this to work out. All right, so kiss most Slovenci, or where are Slovenians from? Um, I'm not gonna get into the, the geopolitics of anything in, in regards to all of this, but when you start looking at old maps and you find out where the Slovenians li lived, um, we're not looking at borders here, folks, right? Borders are man-made, all right? And, and I always tell you, my grandmother actually lived in four or three or four countries and she didn't change her address. You have to think of it that way. Um, borders shifted all over the place. If you still go to Italy to this day um, and speak Slovenian, you'd be shocked how many people will understand you. Just like my wife and I, who experienced many years ago, going to a shopping mall, speaking Slovenian to each other, and ironically, people saying, you're Slovenian. How did, how did you know? Well, I'm Slovenian as well. Or being at a hotel, being served by someone, and being asked, what brings you to Cleveland? We're here for a wedding of a friend. And where's the, where's the wedding? At St. Vitus. Oh, I got married at St. Vitus. That was your daughter, by the way. <laughs> all right. Um, so Slovenians have been, are all over, right? And, and again, when we start talking about countries right now, we're talking about Slovenia proper, we're talking a little bit about Croatia, we're talking Italy, we're talking about Austria, we're talking about Hungary as well, okay? Many people know that, some people don't. Now, if we start looking at, you know, what exists right now in regards to, these are all the municipalities, right? For only two million people, they got a lot of municipalities going on. So we're, gonna, we're not only going to be talking about what's on the inside of this, but all, also what's on the outside of it. Many of you speak different dialects. Some of you understand different dialects. So my background is from Prekmurje and a little bit of Švedska. Okay. Many of you might be from any of the other regions that exist out there. You may be speaking any of these so-called languages, but depending on where you are, you might actually have a, a dialect that is very particular to your, your town. You might have words that nobody else used, right? If you're from Idria or from Ribnica, right? These, these people might not understand you when you, when you move over. Um, my, uh, the village or the, the dialect that I speak, my wife's parents are not very far and they already have different words, all right? And I always joke about it. 
right, in regards to that. But that's what makes us so rich as a culture. So if you're familiar with this, all right, these are the old so-called ways of dividing uh, Slovenia, at least when we start talking about regions, all right? So, and again, don't pinpoint me if I went through a municipality that's not within that, if I got the borders, right? However, we have Primorska to the, to the left, right? Um, we have Notranska, which is basically inner Carniola. Then we have Dolenska, which is lower Carniola. Now, I put Belakraina separately. Some people actually put Dolenska and Belakraina all together, all right? But Belakraina has its own culture, and it's very rich, okay? We have Stratuska, and I actually divided Stratuska into two because of the fact that when we talk costuming, there's two sides, right? The western side has one, and the eastern side has a historically, it, it started out lo a little bit different, okay? Then we have Prekmurje, and I don't know how many people know about Porabia in Hungary. There's only a set amount of villages up there, right? And that's an interesting place to go visit, right? Because again, Hungarian language is so different and then you hear a dialect of Slovenian, which is, well, for lack of a better word, very cool, right? And then we have Koroška, where most of Koroška, there's a few parts of Koroška that are in Slovenian border, but most of Koroška is in Austria. And it is surprisingly um, still very, has still Slovenian uh, tastes there. Even though people may not speak Slovenian anymore, they will always talk about wearing the Slovenian costume. They're proud of that. They're not, they're not saying anything. And there's, and Primorsk is actually divided into other things such as Kanalska Dolina, Venecia, Rezia, which is a, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that, right? And um, Gorishka, et cetera, et cetera. So it's gonna be hard to maybe remember. Some of you may not, but I'm gonna try to reference these, all right, as we go along. Everybody good? All right. So what do we know about costuming? The research of Slovenian costumes unfortunately, um, did not start out too early. And what ended up happening is only a few people, very few people wrote about it. So historically, um, it was non-Slovenians that actually started talking about uh, traditions and the language and the food and the people and, the, and what they wore. Um, even Slovenians, um, there were very few that actually thought that it was of any significance to actually talk about or research. That's the unfortunate part. There are other cultures that are around us, per, you know, predominantly to the south. Right? Uh, I refer to Croatians um, and Serbs a lot because of the fact I know what they do folklore-wise. And their folklore is, not, a lot of people say it's a lot richer than ours. It's not richer, all right? It's different. And then, of course, anything different is, is always more appealing, right? Um, but it's to the point where it was actually researched and documented more than Slovenians, right? Slovenians are the type of individuals, and I know this is going to be a, a broad brush, but Slovenians are the first ones to learn a different language and the first one is to make other people feel comfortable, right? Um, it's, it's always ironic because um, I actually met some Slovenians that I didn't know were Slovenians because they were speaking Italian or they were speaking another language, and then suddenly they turned to Slovenian and went, You're, I go, you know Slovenian? Oh, we're Slovenian. How do you know all these languages? Well, that's what we do. We learn that. And it's not as though you're sacrificing who you are. You just want everybody else to feel more comfortable. And I think that's who we are as well, right? We're, we're comfortable with who we are and what we are. Okay, so research, um, ironically, the person that did the most research uh, actually did more research when she retired. And I'll talk about her fairly quick. There's collections that exist. I'm gonna tell you that if anyone in this room or anyone who is online is very interested, there are some museums in Slovenia that will, depending on who you are and why you want to look for information, they will gladly help you. And unfortunately, I'm not gonna say this because this is being recorded, uh, but there are some that would actually, unfortunately, blow your mind. Like, there are collections that exist. In Ljubljana, in the Slovenski Ethnografski Museum, there are thousands of headwear pechas that you and I cannot get to. And that's where they're going to remain until someone does some research and writes a book. And if no one does it, well, I'm not saying I'm going to, but if no one does it, I'm pushing. All right? There are collections out there, and unfortunately, um, those things are hidden, right? Um, there are uh, museums, I will tell you, in Krajn, Absolutely awesome, okay? Uh, there's others that will help you out if you want. And again, depending on who you are and, and the reason for it, okay? Um, there's a lot of watercolors, uh, historic watercolors on, on um, uh, Slovenian uh, costuming, but they don't look anything like they are anymore, right? 
Uh, there's old photographs. You have black and whites at home. Let me tell you, I'm sure there's old photographs that kick around. There's a lot of misconceptions about what our costumes are as well. And I'll talk a little bit later. Bit later. Um, most people think there's one national costume. Well, there is a Naruto Nosha, right? And I might blow your mind that saying the real Naruto Nosha, if we really wanted to push the Naruto Nosha that is truly ours, it might surprise you which one I'm going to choose. And that is my, that's, that's my opinion, by the way. All right. Um, does every region have a Naruto Nosha or one variation? I think you know the answer is no. OK. Uh, simple costuming compared to the neighbors. That's the problem. Everyone looks at other costumes, like Croatians and, and the Italians and the Austrians and the Hungarians. And everyone is, and ours seems so simple. Simple is great. If it's made correctly, it looks awesome. Remember the, the thing when you wear a costume is not that the costume pieces are nicely made. I mean, there's some awesome gems here today. Um, it's who's wearing it. Someone was quoted once as saying, you don't just put on a costume, you drive the costume. The, you, know, you become that person. If you're that kind of person, then you know what I'm talking about. Those that get to don those Kurenz masks, they don't fall from the side or come down from below. We have people who are going to be wearing them. Some people get obsessed and possessed by that idea. It's like, whoa, I felt something that I never felt. Yes, when you wear a costume and you wear it well, it could be simple. Because it's about you. It's not about the clothing. The clothing makes you look good, right? Ladies, if you wear a head covering, it's not about how glitzy the head covering is. We want to see your face. We don't want to see the head covering. Did you ever think about that? It's an accessory. It's not the grand thing. And I think that's where we kind of got off track a bit, all right? Um, and influences. All right, so here we go. By the way, I went through this yesterday, and I made it in 45. There's no way I'm going to make it in 45. All right, traditional things nowadays. Museum archives and displays. I'm pushing for more displays. Um, hoping to actually, again, I'm planting a seed. I'm hoping to get a display sent from Slovenia to the US and Canada. That is one of my dreams, to bring something here. Let's celebrate it that way. Why not? That might kickstart them there. Uh, there's family treasures. We saw some. There's, OK, there's some family treasures here. Festive dress, you all know about festive dress. If you know about the, um, the days in Kamnik for the Naruna Nosha, those have actually changed a bit. They've actually cleaned up a lot in regards to that. People w used to wear costumes for mass, I believe, here for Svetna um, Nadella, for, um, right? Svetna Nadella, somebody tell me in English, please. Palm, Palm thank you. Thank you, Palm Sunday. Right? You still do Butare as well, right? You go out with your Naruna Nosha, right? That's multi generational. Keep that going. That's amazing. It shows some significance in something, right? Please keep going. Um, folklore groups, right? There's folklore groups outside of Slovenia. There's a lot inside. Sometimes people just, that's, the only, that's their only exposure to costuming. Bands, hmm. Now, there are a lot of traditional bands and not only Zabavna bands. I'm going to be really going on a limb, and I'm going to, this is, I'm, be, understand this. We're going to learn to agree to disagree. Not only Zabavna Glasba is not traditional Slovenian music. OK? Sorry. Ausinik is amazing. Slok is amazing. And I will poke and waltz with my wife in a costume, no problem. However, it is not traditional. It was the in thing. Consider the Beatles, right? A wave. And the reason I'm mentioning this is not to negate what they are. What I'm trying to tell you is the following. The costuming that those bands have are actually have evolved into what is comfortable for them. All right? So when we look at some things, you can be like, uh, Dave, why is there no white being shown on the leg? Because who wants to show their underwear? All right? It is what it is. And we do what we can for the time as well. But a lot of our influencing, especially those that were emigrated, only know by seeing a album sleeve. Right? There was no other way of understanding it. And of course, we attach to it. We're proud of that. I'm quite proud of that. Right? Nothing better than playing some Slock music, driving down the road at a red light and putting your window down and people wondering what you're doing. But, <laughs> all right. but for me, it's actually about, some of you actually know, it's actually about Rezi and Tsitira music. That's another story. All right. Choirs also have costuming, especially in Koroshka, of all, of all places. Uh, government officials and delegates. It, uh, it's become a bit of an interesting topic. Um, there were two, I believe, mayors that, um, well, one mayor, the other was a dignitary. 
um, ambassador, I believe, that actually wore a traditional costume when meeting another dignitary. And people in Slovenia said, what is that about? You're embarrassing us. Hmm. I think it was actually, I thought that was absolutely great. You're, you're being proud of who you are. Right? Most people said, well, no, he should be wearing, a, you know, should be wearing something more formal. What's more formal than traditional costumes? Hmm. All right. And masks. Masks are actually part of this as well. Right? And you are all familiar with masks. You kind of know the guy on the very left-hand side. It's a four, that's one of the, what, the, the oldest kurents, right? And then these are what kurents used to look like, if you can actually see that, all right? They weren't as big and bold and big bells and, uh, right? Machoism, right? And then look at the first kurents. They were all of furs and, right? It wasn't, everything's become more commercialized. Um, and the very top, um, those of you that might know, everybody, anybody know? Excellent. Wow, look at you. All right. From Bela Kraina, right? Do you know there's a Zeleni Yuri that was actually depicted by Shubic from Eastern Starska? There you go. Most people are like, oh no, that, doesn't, that only exists in Bela Kraina. Oh no. No, 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 no. Right? And he was more of a happy one, by the way. This poor, this poor, this poor man, this poor little boy stood there, and at the end they, uh, you know, they dropped him into the river. I don't know if you kind of know what happens there for that poor guy. All right? And then we have others, right? Laufarie. And then we have, haha, everybody from Prekmori and Starska knows about this Lucia, right? They used to come around from, from house to house with a plate of eyeballs, scaring children. Yes, just before Christmas, by the way. All right? And then Pechta Baba, right? And Bela Mascara. That's from Berezia, actually. These, these women used to go from house to house as well during Pust. And they used to, it's basically they used to dance there, right, to like well wishes. So there's a lot of masks that can be considered that. I think I'm going to stop with mask on this one, though. But we have blue marie. There's, you name it, we got it. If you see laufari, laufari started about a month ago already in Terkno. They were already running the streets. Can you imagine that happening in Cleveland? People are going to think something <laughs> crazy is going on, right? Why not? All right, sorry. It, <laughs> I'm all for that. All right. Oh, sorry. There we go. This is the last one. Anyone know who he might be? He's a mask. It's part of maybe a costume of trans, right? This is actually an, a traditional Pozvachin who was from the region of Prekmuria. He's dressed like in Prekmuria. Eastern Shadaris had him as well. And two men would actually represent the bride and the groom and go to house to house to invite them to the wedding. These poor boys had a lot to learn. They had to learn the gospel. They had to learn a lot of jokes. And they, it, there was a lot there. And he actually has in his hand, if you can see that, it's actually a yezhoka. So if the kids were coming around, he would, he would actually smack them with it, which, which wasn't always fun. Right? And the young boy on the right is actually a uh, kopyash, right? But he's also a flag bearer. Flag bearers were very common in Slovenia as well in traditional areas such as Bela Kraina and Stairska, right? Um, the, and actually in Koroshka, where they would actually have a flag at the beginning of a wedding. Because in, in Koroshka, they would actually use it to bless the dance floor. You couldn't dance without blessing the dance floor, right? Because if you just started playing music, it may be an evil place. People believed in this stuff. All right, so let's go through this. Um, I'm going to cut to the chase with a lot of this. Um, the ones that I'm going to bring up are the word nosha and then the word uh, kostum. Yeah, custom. I can go through all of these and I'll just bore you for a good half an hour and I don't want to do that. The way the intellects are going or the way, the way studies are going with it, the, the word nosha does not exist as the way we know it. And I'm going to tell you that I always use the word nosha and I will probably use it to the very end, even though that it goes against scholars right now. All right, a very good friend of mine, Dr. Boyan Krifitz, actually started the word kostum and said, you were a folklorni kostum, not a folklorna uh, nosha. And I just said, no, mine's a nosha. He goes, it's a nosha if it's old. If it's reconstructed, it's a costume. But as all of you know the English language, costume actually can have a negative connotation to it. Maybe negative is too strong of a word. But you, know, you wear costumes for Halloween and for Pust. So when you wear a national costume, you're wearing a costume, it's, it, it, does it give it the same, right? So I say to us, nosha means a lot more then costume would. And this is going to get back to him, by the way. I know that. All right. But he said, you say what you want to say. To me, it's always a nosha. But if I ever go to Slovenia, I said, uh, lako vidim kostumi. 
right? Can I see your, your costumes and your, and your um, reconstructions, right? Because that's the new buzzword in regards to that. Um, Naru no nosha is what we kind of know as the Gorinsko nosha, right? And that no longer really exists as a word now. It's pripadnostni uh, kostum. Because there's not only a Gorinska one, but there's also those that are from Primorska, from Bela Kraina, from Prekmurya. All right, so, all right, here we go. Costumes all dependent on your social status and who you were, how much money you had, what you, what you had connections to, could you get different fabrics, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Nowadays, a lot of, a lot of women actually buy an alba because they're married, they think they need to have an alba. In truth, uh, alba, you'd be lucky if a one, one lady from the village or the town had an alba and then she may actually uh, allow you to borrow it for a wedding. You have to realize there was money there, right? Only some people had it. Others did not. So there's some fallacies here, and we're going to maybe break some. Um, a lot of you look at what is um, what folklore groups have. Be very wary of the internet. <laughs> and this is one of the reasons I actually started a, like a blog website on Facebook, is because I was looking for things, and everything I, every time I clicked on it, it was the worst it was the worst things that I found, right? It's like, this is not a good representation. And people are going to find that representation and make it and just keep manifesting that, all right? Not to say that what I've got on my site is only the best, because I've been known to be wrong. My wife can vouch for that 110%. Um, but the truth of the matter is, I wanted you to be able to find things that might help you understand it a little bit more, all right? So here we go. There's a whole bunch of different things. Now, most people look at these and say, these aren't costumes, but this is clothing. And many, many people are starting to reconstruct clothing from different times. The man on the very left-hand side, you might have a picture like this and say, OK, that's my great-grandfather. You know, what does that matter? What's he wearing? He's wearing a shirt, correct? Check his, check his collar. Does he have one? Now, what I'm making you do now is I'm rewiring you. I'm making you look at pictures differently. He doesn't have a collar. Collars weren't always meant, like, they didn't have to be collars. Nowadays, collars are getting bigger and whatever, right? It's, it's the trend. They didn't have collars. Not everyone did, right? So you have to start looking at that. These are work clothes. People are like, we can't show this on a, I can't wear that on a stage. Why not? Of course you can. All right? Bella Karina. I can tell by the architecture, by the way, before I can tell by the costumes. Or what, sorry, the clothing. All right? These are from Starska. They're working in the vineyards, right? This is a nice etching of Brskice. These, these are women from Istra who used to make bread. They used to sell it in Tirsk. Now, when you start looking at how this is made, try and figure that out. People are looking at that going, is that, is that a sleeve? Is that a shawl? How is this put together? Right? And then you, you've got them in real, so-called real life. All right? I was going to show you a few black and whites. And some of you might go, I've got something like that. Do these look familiar? The gentleman on the right looks familiar? Well, it looks familiar to the point of, that looks familiar as a costume, right? He doesn't have boots, by the way. He has socks. All right? Wow, there's the Naranonosha. Oh, hold on a second. She's not wearing a black apron. It's not a Naranonosha. Who said it had to be black? Oh, sorry. Some of you are going, what? All right? Can you imagine? She wore that for how long and still proud of it? OK? Bella Kraina, it's actually a wedding, right? Now here's one for you. I guarantee you, you don't know what region that's from. Why? Because everyone started to start wearing the same kind of clothing, right? And this is what happened in Slovenia very early on in like the Industrial Revolution. Most people think that Slovenians were that poor for the longest time. And you know what? The truth of the matter is white costumes, most people think white costumes ended up like 1940s. There were people that still wore them. Most of them were gone before 1900. When they started doing research on Bella Kraina, they started to realize that they were making things up for a white costume, the researchers, because they wanted something different. All right. Some of you might know who this person is. Actually, she was on a lot of sleeves. She's actually, I think, on an Ausenik sleeve of a, of a record. Anybody know who that is? Maybe? Maybe? Tonchka Marot. Tonchka Marot, actually, Franz Marot started the Glasmero Naran Fisli Institute in Ljubljana. And, and he actually had his wife and her sister actually started the, started the dance group, Akademska Folklorna Skupina Franz Marot, which is, took his name. 
she was actually an actress. She, she had a lot of credentials on stage. She was very smart and very particular on how to record things. She was very particular about how people looked. Look at the way this costume, she put this costume together. She is wearing an Alba. She is not married. And I'm going to tell you, she actually acquired Alba for the dance group. And what happened, now this is a hearsay thing, but I know the person quite well and I can vouch for him. He said, originally Alba were actually created for the dance group and then some of them got destroyed. Now what do we do? Well, we took the back off of it and put it on a piece of uh, cotton and then we created something called the Zavijachka. Now, Zavijachka existed, but none of the fancies above this, they're called a Chernik, that never existed before on a Zavijachka. Zavijachka was plain and simple. Wasn't all these little tinsels, folks. And it started because of this lady right there. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Things evolve, and I get that. That's really good. She did a lot to preserve a lot of things on stage, but a lot of things also that she did on stage were staged. So if you ever look at Marot's old Gorenska suite of dances, there is a lot of artistry and things that were put in by her. And, there, and I'm not saying it's wrong at all. It actually brought us out to the forefront compared to our Sl Slavic neighbors, especially when other groups did it. Everybody wanted to do Gorenska, right? So Gorenska became the powerhouse that everybody wanted to associate with. There are a lot of research, and I'm going to basically, I will, I will pop past this very quickly, but I will tell you that the researchers and the people that are doing this, I will probably be able to put uh, double the names on here eventually. And this is me just brainstorming very quickly. And if I've forgotten anyone on here, I, I keep thinking of a new person every day. They're not in alphabetical order. I will tell you the way that this actually works for me is the person on the very top is Luba Vrtovic Tribats, and because I definitely have to give her credit for the insanity that I jumped into in regards to this. She came to Canada to uh, teach us folklore because someone, uh, Mirko Ramos, unfortunately couldn't come. And he sent Luba, who was part of the dance group that he taught. She was a, she was a seamstress, or she liked to work with costumes. She was the start of my insanity. She chose me to teach a younger dance group. She, I was voluntold, by the way. I was not asked. And she goes, you're going to do it. And I was like, OK, sure I am. And from there, she has been instrumental in getting old techniques back. And I'm going to tell you that many doors opened because they were nicely opened, and a few I had to knock really hard in order to get here. Um, Dr. M M Maria Makarovic is, if you have anything with her name on it book-wise, it's gold. All right, She's done a ton of research. Ironically, a lot of her research is after she's actually retired. All right. Mirko Ramos, Tonchka Marot, et cetera, et cetera. There's tons. There's tons. And there are people who know what they're doing. This is where the internet is great because a lot of them actually show what they're doing and most of them from all different regions. This is what you're familiar with, correct? Uh, about 1908, people started banding together and wanted to nationalize, like they wanted to show their nationalities. What are they going to do? This is the costume they're wearing. This is what they created. They plundered farms. They took what they could, and then they made other stuff. Look at the length of the dresses, folks. They're not up to your knee, right? Look at the way things are done, all right? I know I'm going to sound, I'm gonna, I, am, I sound more harsh than I am, all right? But when you look at these, you have to realize, when was it done, why was it done, and you know, why is there alterations, especially Right? Later on, things are like, you're going to buy the cheapest material and the quickest thing, right? But again, a lot of time, you know, if it's made correctly, it's going to last generations. Some of you have proven that just today by bringing things in. Um, again, these are old watercolors that are there. I'm going to kind of skip through that. Check that one out. That's Gorenska. Kranitsa. Okay. Here we go. Come on, please. Watercolors all from all over, okay? Um, and there were actually a lot of these, a lot of these. These are all from Gorenska, except for the one here, which is Notranska. These are all versions of Gorenska costumes. You're looking at that going, no, that's not what I know. Well, exactly, right? What about these? Check this out. Uh, the reason I put this one in is um, I'm, I, I'm not going to be on. I, I don't know if he's Croatian or Serbian. Um, he didn't basically drew all, all of nationalities through South Slavic. 
okay? And he started adding different colors. Artists added colors that were interesting to them. So don't take everything 100%. Please understand that, right? So you see light greens and pinks and yellows, really? Mm, okay, all right. Um, but again, if everyone know, if anyone is familiar with uh, Chantal, ho, ho, ho. There's a lot of stuff that, that he drew, all right? That's Chantal, that's Chantal. This one's in Bella Kraina. This is actually in the museum in Metlika. This is actually, you know, an older lady. And if you start looking at details, you go, wow, I didn't know about that, right? Much older. Anybody know that one? Anyone know? That's not Slovenian. That can't be Slovenian. Any idea? I had to put one in there. Right? You kind of go, what? It's so different, right? Yes and no. Uh, many scholars tell me, or I, I had one in particular who said, um, the women in Prekmuri actually were the ones that actually moved, moved uh, clothing styles. The men kind of stayed with what they had. And the women went forward because they went to the market. They needed to, sh right? And that's not always the case. Usually men got their suits before the women actually. W men were always kind of forward thinking, like, or they wanted to look good, right? And the women kept the older things going for a while. These are also watercolors and things. This is kind of a famous wedding scene. I think all of you know this one. This is, pulls at the heart string as well with Zivilka, right? And this one up here, you two know this. You, some of you know this one, right? Right? Koroshka Zilska. Zilska Dulina. This was the shortest skirt in all of Austro-Hungary. So pardon me here. Maria Teresa, uh, Maria Teresa actually said she wanted them to lengthen their skirts because their skirts were too short. You have to be decent. So what they ended up doing is adding a green band underneath it. And that costume to this day has a green band on the bottom. Most people had no idea why there's a green band. I'm letting you know they wanted to, right? And it's also plisirano. It is ribbed, right? They iron it. To this day, they still do this. More watercolors from all over the place. One artist, right? Again, if you're going to go reconstruct this, it's going to be a little hard. But you kind of get the gist of it, right? This one look familiar to you? Just a little? I think this is one of the most exquisite pieces of art, Slovenian artistry ever. That's just me, right? But when you start looking at the detail of this, she looks familiar. These two look very familiar. She's wearing an alba. She's wearing a zaviacha. Aha, what is she wearing? Do you know that it's a pattern dress? And it's got a white apron? Does that mean anything? Well, it's white. She, it's festive. She was someone of some status, maybe, right? Uh, you celebrated Prashen Dun just a few days ago, right? You all know parts of Prashen here in the corner, right? You have uh, Koroshka represented. You have gur like Gurishka represented. Aha, look, you even have Prekmuria represented on there. Go figure. Is it still in, it's still in the dome? Is that correct? That's exquisite. All right, we will dive into it. But look what we've done with costuming nowadays. Right? We have mascots dedicated. Oh, by the way, chocolate. Everybody know Gorinka chocolate? Right? And then, of course, I put these on. There's actually an artist on Facebook. She does like anime, and she's doing costuming. I think it's kind of cool, like her interpretation. But then you get dance groups who actually have, are using elements of it. Um, there's a clay. Again, I'm not getting any kickback from these people. I wouldn't mind from this person. But uh, they're exquisite if you see them, and then you kind of go, I want a lot of these. Right? Um, and then this came out, I'm going to tell you, and it's going to sound arrogance, but I, I had a sweetheart. I used, to, I used to be part of the Franza Model uh, group in Ljubljana. And unfortunately, I, as I said to someone today, I could probably cry right away uh, in regards to it. It's one of those sentimental things, and the things that pop up. When these things came out, I'm like, I need to get my hands on one of these. And I'm going to tell you, three ended up with chocolate bars and, uh, and tea, like chai and that, um, on my doorstep just before, from Miklaus Giovanna, from, from a... From a I hate to say old friend. She's not old, but she's, she's an old friend. Um, and all it is is tin. And uh, yeah, I'm going to cherish that. But, but also the way things are drawn on there, right? I'm trying to remember the artist. He passed away. I'm, uh, not good. So this is where we're going to dive, right? Any of these look familiar at home? Some of them are on tables here, right? From all over the place. This exquisite, you tell me our costumes aren't exquisite. This is in a pecha. But when, when you're on a stage, most people won't see that. 
the amount of hours and work that someone did to put that together, and people burn this and throw this in the garbage. Please don't. All right. Materials that are used um, for most costuming, of course, is here. Linen and wool. Um, Rashavin is actually a combination of wool and uh, linen. Uh, you can't get that anymore. Stoff. Um, a lot of people, we call it, ba it's called baize nowadays, right? You know what they use baize for? It's, it's rare. You can't find it. But you can find it because they line pool tables with it. They used to make vests with that. That took me a while to figure out, by the way. All right? Cottons. Modrtisk is blueprint or um, it's blueprint blocking. You have white, uh, pardon me, blue material. Or pardon me, white material. And then you stamp on it with patterns. And then you put it in indigo. And then you get that. Most people think that's Slovak and Czech. Guess what? It's not just that. It's Slovenian as well. All right? Uh, silks, brocades, leathers, suede, metals, embroidery threads. Three types. You all set? Panonski type, Mediterranean type, and uh, Alpski type. I was going to do Alpski last, but I'm going to do it first because you all know it quite well. All right? So here we go. And I'm going to just try and get through this. All right. All the regions that are part of this. Now, historically, Poroska, Gorenska, Notranska, Dolenska, Western Starska, and the majority of Primorska, except for the Mediterranean part. Otherwise, they are all characterized by the following. All right? Men wear the same vest, white shirt, right? Some type of, if I say, if, deadly word, knickers, right? We can't say lederhosen, right? But some form of pant that goes below the knee. Not up here, below the knee. And then there was something that always hid the leg part, be that boots or socks. Okay? Sometimes shawls, always a hat. Okay? In regards to that. Women are a little different, but women have this. They all have a dress on a bodice. You understand what that, right? You understand more than I that, right? It's always sewn onto a bodice. All right? There are d variations of lengths and there are variations of looks. But it's always that way. And there's a lot of different accessories. A lot of you know shawls and, and different, um, uh, different headpieces and things of that nature. Blouses are, again, all relatively all similar, but different in the way they're, they're created. And again, you might not see this on a stage or from far away, but when you're close, you see the differences between all of those. OK, ready? Anyone? I know you can't really see that very well. She's got a very short skirt. Any idea what that one on the very left is? Koroshka Zilska. OK. This one is? Ah, nice. Gorenska. Thank you. Ah. Koroshka. Rosh. All right. There's three. Zilia, Rosh, Poduna up in Austria. These two? So these are reconstructions, by the way. Western Starska. Notranska. Soshka Dulina. Kimechka, that means farmers. And this is Primorska. Primorska's rich, right? All right. There is one Gorenka and two that we don't know about, correct? Well, we know that she's a Gorenka because she's wearing an Alva. There's a stereotype. Look at the other two. They're wearing a Pecha. And there's various words. You say Achta, by the way? Achta, yes. There's various words for Pecha. The way they're tied, the Petelinu. Right? They were also tied for rouge. Some of them were just tied in the back of their heads. If I said that this is more traditional, that if people wore this, most people would say, that's not Slovenian, or who thought of that? This is historically what it was. Right? The men actually have boots here. That, that was also rare, because that was a lot of money. These are old reconstructions that were done for the Trzaski Musee. The reason I wanted to show this is because of the fact this is Modrotisk. So this is the, the dyeing, indigo dye. right? Also to the fact that her bodice is actually shorter, all right? He's actually wearing something around his um, waist. And the reason being is, do you know all vests were short? They didn't go down to cover your belly. They were actually short. They went to your true waist. And then they had a belt there. Oh, really? Yes. Right? That's how it was put together. This is something that is truly old when it comes to golden. Right? The bodices were very gold. Right? gold. Uh, you cannot get brocades like this now if your life depended on it. <coughs> Older pieces that are in, uh, the one on the very left was in Kamnik, uh, uh, just as an um, um, exhibition. 
But these, this one is actually found in the Ethnografsky Musée behind a case. Hard to take photos of, right? But everything is predominantly linen for Gorenska, right? Silks weren't around forever, folks, right? And it is equally beautiful. Now, I, um, for, the, for the dance group Venets, I wanted to do a Gorenska costume, and I actually fell into doing uh, a Gorenska version that is uh, very well known around the area of Kranska Gora, right? And right from a, a town just outside of it called Ratice in Podkoren. So these costumes, a lot of people said these costumes were planchari. These were shep. No, no, this was actually worn, all right? So if you look at the, what this man is wearing, again, it's a watercolor. I actually, um, this is mine. Uh, I actually had this made. Um, a lot of men actually wore a top on top of the vest. But again, for, for purposes, we don't always have, have those made. Um, she actually has a lot of gathering going on here. This is, a recon this, is one of the, this is the first reconstruction that was done. All right. Um, how I got that photo, I'm not quite sure. I, I ended up with that as well. But again, a lot of this was documented as well, right? Artists actually did this. I, can't, I don't have the colored version of these. Apparently, there's some orange here. I think she has an orange apron or orangish apron in the actual colored one. But this idea of the golden bodice, right? Oops. I'm just going to kind of let you look at these like crazily. On the very left-hand side, um, consider that what the lady is actually wearing right now is a reconstruction, and a lot of the things were handed down to her. So even the links, she's probably wearing something that her mother or, grand, great, or her grandmother wore. Uh, you know what I mean? So links, not everything fits. Things get shorter, right? People get taller. I noticed that this morning at breakfast when the, when the basketball team from Maine came down and all the girls were over six feet tall. I'm like, wow, where, we, where, where have we come? Okay, But again, that's one of the reasons. This was all a, a, a group in um, Krensko Gora or uh, Podkoren. Um, and again, a lot of the things were taken out of grandmothers, right, and they trying to fit it, right? Consider hats like this. This is what a hat was all about. Keep the rain and the sun away, right? Come on. There we go. And again, they do what you do here for special feast days. Right? For Zhegnanya, especially for Easter, like Easter blessings, they would go and they wear this. They're very well known for doing this. All right. This is Gorenska. Now, the thing that you can't necessarily see, you can't see it there too much, but you can see it here. A green band on the bottom, and it's also plisirno. That means it is ribbed. That, it, that means you have to iron it. All right? This is very, very reminiscent, or very much common in that area. And if you start considering, what that looks like on stage. You can check that out. All right. These are very. These are two dance groups. Um, um, one from Yesenitsa. The other one is actually modeled from Ljubljana. Check out what the lady's wearing or what the girl's wearing. She's wearing a zavayachka, all bleshtitse. It, it wasn't like that before. It was only fabric before, only fabric before. And actually, there's one over there that kind of was intriguing. They brought it out of the archives here. Then you have something called a kochamaika. All right which was actually worn on the very top of these. When, as the dresses started to evolve, the bottoms, it was a bottom and a top now. It was no longer a bodice, or you put it on top of the bodice. Women wanted to look modern, right? These are very tight fitting, very tight fitting, right? These various examples are all in, Kransko, uh, pardon me, Ratice Museum. And they'll let you touch them, or at least they did, all right? And this one was actually in Kranska Gora on somebody's, on somebody's attic, because it was there. Why? Well, where else are we going to put it? We don't need it, right? Examples of Gorenska. Examples of Gorenska men. Check out the variances here. Now, a lot of times they, they kind of upped it, right? Nobody really wore Tsokle, please. But this was done for a reason, right? They went to, right? They either either the Tsar came, uh, pardon me, uh, somebody came from Vienna, or they went to Vienna. That's they wanted to show some differences there. This is kind of like I'm not gonna say everyday wear, but this is festive wear, right? This was created with bits and pieces, but check that out and check that out, right? This is military based. Did you know that? They came home from the military. Why are they gonna stop wearing it? It's a nice warm jacket. I'm gonna wear it, right? And these things basically got incorporated back in. 
And then we found the Marela on the le very left-hand side. That's a little bit dark here. Um, right, I can see it beautifully here. But um, the idea of starting that nationalism, we were Slovenians. What, how are we going to make ourselves look different than the Italians, than the Austrians, than the Hungarians, and then the Cro Croats? How are we going to look different? We want things that are different. We don't want anything that looks the same. We want difference, right, in regards to it. And that was the key. We wanted difference, right? These, I'm sure there's one kicking around in Cleveland somewhere. This is one of the, this is the way old vests used to be. And unfortunately, I don't have another picture of another one. I, now that I see it, there should be another red one. These, uh, the, the red uh, woolen vests were worn by everyone. Stoff. With huge, huge silver or pewter buttons. Pewter buttons, consider this. Pewter buttons. Um, there was a story about a man who actually uh, wrote up a tab in a bar and he didn't have any money. And he actually took off one of his pewter buttons from his, from his uh, Leipzig, like from his uh, vest. And that's how he paid for it. So when you, looked at the, when you looked at it, it wasn't missing. They put another cheap button on the bottom. Everybody said, what's with the button? He goes, well, I used the other one to, to actually pay for my bar bill. Right? Right? Nowadays, people are like, well, this doesn't mean anything. Why? Just get rid of it. Right? And this is exactly how it evolved. We started getting into more colors. Again, industrial revolution. Or pardon me, get to the point of we were lucky that we were in Austro-Hungary. We were close to Tursk. We were like, or Trieste. We were close. So these kind of things actually filtered in. But it mainly filtered in on the west, right? Not towards the east. More towards the west. Right? And these don't look that odd. This is what we wear for an Abnonosha. Right? This velvet, good luck getting. You can't get it. Check out the buttons. I don't know if you can see their shells. Ah, so people started to make things a little different, right? For themselves, personal tastes. And pants. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, pants were pants. They were made of various things: wool, cotton, linen. Oh yeah, and skins, right? Everyone's we have to have irhastelache, right? Which are like leather-based. Not everybody could do that. Not everybody was a hunter. Not everybody could afford that. They were basically different materials that way. And the length of them, this is actually, um, also realize that the waist is pretty high up, right? The pants weren't down here. They weren't low riders. The pants were up here. And then the vest was here. Aha. Uh -huh. And if you had to, you put something around here to cover <coughs> the, the, the midsection, right? So pants were high up, right? It's winter, maybe not today. I, I joke that I brought the warmth from Canada, um, right? But some of these look familiar to you. If you go to some of the museums back home, you actually see there were women versions of this as well. And the embroidery on these were great. OK, I did skip one, but that is A-OK -okay on that one. All right, then you start looking at this. This is what we want. That's, that's the Naranonosha. We love that, right? That's a Tonchka modeled at her best. All right, check this one out, Pecha. Equally, absolutely, positively beautiful. With the dance group, uh, when, I, when I had a bunch of uh, young, young children, or young adults, I should, I'm going to call them, and I put pitches on all the, all the girls, went on stage, we got off. Somebody asked me why I put Bela Kranska Pecha on, on a Gorenska Nosha. And I just said, Gorenzi wore them. And they said, no, they didn't. I said, why not? Well, I don't see that in any pictures coming from Slovenia. You see, that, it, it's that misinterpretation, right? Try and get a hat like that nowadays. This was the first, uh, this was the first uh, uh, days of, not in the Nosha days in Kamnik. This is the first one. Check out her costumes. Check out what she's wearing. Right? Check the length out. It's all decent, right? It's all decent. I don't know if you can see it. Right? Check that out. They're starting to evolve back into this because there's more people that are getting involved and, and I hate to say trying to clean it up, but trying to clean it up, right? Everyday wear from Gorenska, and I'm just going to add, because I know I'm going to be, I'm, I'm already over, way over, but here we go. This is what people started doing, right? The one thing here that really, um, it, it, it's because they're wearing this almost amazingly. Check out the white pants. This is where white pants started, or the white underneath knickers, right? It's about 1908, about, right, 19? Um, but also realize a lot of hair being shown before hair was natural. Women always covered their hair. 
always covered, always, 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 right? Nowadays we have all this, oh, I can't wear that, it ruins my hair. I'm like, I'm like okay, then don't wear a nosha. Check, the, they're not bad with hair, right? Check hers out though. I don't know if you can see hers. The length of hers, she's wearing an old one. She's wearing someone's old costume or old dress. And again, she's taller, right? Why ruin it, right? Just wear it the way it is. And many of you are very familiar with all of these, right? These, um, I, there's some shawls that are, that are kicking around here, I, right? We have various belts that were out there. Aube, which most and some of you are very familiar with. You're very familiar with this Aube, right? Very familiar with this Aube. I believe even in Ausilik at one time, the singer actually wore an Aube, but then she found it very difficult to sing and hear herself. Well, what do you think, right? Because she had to listen, to, she had to hear herself as well. But she had a beautiful alba. If you, wait, if you actually look at it, it's beautiful. But check out these. Now, there's actually three different kinds of alba. All right? The ones that we're very familiar with, unfortunately, this one you can't really see. This one is a rounded one. There is one that kind of comes up and then falls down. That's the most common one. And then there's the flat one. Flat. All right? But when you put it on, it somewhat makes that because it forms the head. Now, which is the oldest one? More than likely this one, because it's the easiest one to make, right? But these are very difficult to make. You realize that this, this part, this is called the chelnik. The chelnik was made of either brocade or black material or golden, uh, well, golden brocade, black material, and then tinsel started up and the embroidery of all of that. Embroidery was, uh, golden thread embroidery was more common and then when tinsel came out, that just exploded into all of the other stuff. That's the more uh, the more like bright, the better. And I'm like, you know what? You want to see the face. This, this helps this shine. Why would this help that shine? Think about it. You're looking at, if you're looking in the mirror, yeah, you're wearing an alba. They want to see your face. They want to go, oh, look at all that, right? But again, this is what we're used to and this is what we can find nowadays. It's going to be really hard to find. Like, can you make that? I don't know. That's a tough one, right? Exquisite. That's an alba with fur on it. All right? Fur wasn't, no, just, you know. People wanted to stay warm. You got to realize what they were wearing is things that they needed, right? It wasn't just about glamour, right? Right? We wear it for a festivity. They wear it every day. What about this one? She's wearing an alba with a pecha on top of it. Yes, that could be common too. Most people are like, oh, that's wrong. So here's some examples of them. There's a flat one there. There's a flat one there, right, on stage, right? These three keep popping up, by the way. Okay, any idea what that is? That's a mala pecha. The other one is visoka, high pecha. This is a small pecha. This small pecha has a very small backing to it. It's easier to make. Sorry, it was easier to make. Do you know that they lost how to make it? They don't know how to make it. They just reconstructed them. Just about, I'd say about 10 years ago. They kind of tore them apart and started to, to do that, right? And it was instrumental from a number of people that actually did that. And this is all reconstructed by the same lady who's wearing it, right? She learned how to make this. Took some time. And there you go. Sorry, I, there's a lot going to see here. Can you see this picture here? I don't know if you can see this one. See this one on the very bottom? <laughs> this one accidentally came into my, in, into my uh, view. We were eating in a restaurant in Kranska Gora. My wife and I and family love Kranska Gora, by the way. We're eating there, we're waiting for our food. I was checking things around, and there was this picture framed. And lo and behold, I went, what? Check this out. This was framed. So I took a picture of the picture, right? They're all wearing something called zaviyachke. So it's here, and then it's tied in the back. That was the most common head covering. Most people say only unmarried women or unmarried girls wore that. No, women wore it as well. Right? Because they can afford that, or they could afford to do that. A lot of reconstructions happening there. Check out that they're actually made with brocade material. 
all right, various kinds, right? Aren't these two loving? That's my group from a few years ago. They hugged on stage, somebody grabbed them, and I said, I love this picture, all right? These are Zaviachkin. Ah, black. But you didn't know it was all embroidered, did you? White? White embroidery. You don't see this. This is from around Blit. If you have one of these at home, come talk to me. Please. Please? <laughs> also made with brocade. This is like a silk and brocade material as well. The, um, the uh, Gorinsky Musei in Kran has been absolutely great. This is a group from uh, Blit. They reconstruct the costumes from around Blit. This was one reconstruction. One municipality actually funded to have this done. I believe, don't quote me on this, I believe this is the mayor and his wife. Wearing a porhuka, right? On, right? Can you imagine wearing that? People are, oh, well, this is not really like Gorenska. I mean, it's not, it's simple. It's simple, but it's beautifully made, I think. This is, that, this is my personal, right? You make, something, you make something that fits good, it looks good, right? This is also Gorenska. And now we are in Notranska. The reconstructions of Notranska. Notranska was a place that was never, never really uh, researched, unfortunately, with costuming. So this is actually an old watercolor that was then created by about two or three dance groups. Um, Koleda from Vilenia, actually, I believe, spearheaded that one. And then um, Tino Rojans in Ljubljana actually created them as well. Um, and many people are now doing that. But consider like what the men are wearing, right? These should actually be tighter pants. And most people look at them and say, this is Slovak related. Um, no. You have to realize borders are just borders, right? These are also um, Notranska. Um, this is an interesting one. And um, as you can tell, I'm long-winded every so often. No, I'm a long-winded period. All right, this one I have to tell you about just a little bit because this is what really sparked my interest in costuming. Uh, Dr. Ma Maria Makarovic was going and studying in Nutranska around the lake of Cerknica. Do you all, the, the disappearing lake, if you, know, if you know that. And I said, I need to spend an hour or two with you. She said, I got something better for you. If you want to spend a day with me, get a ticket to Cerknica. You're going to sit beside me, and I am all yours to ask any question for the entire day. <laughs> oh, here we go. Bought my ticket, sat with her. Like, to me, it, she's legend, okay? She has everything in her head. All right, she has done so many, so much research. Now, I w my task that day was to hold on to an artistic attache case. Inside, I didn't know what it was until we e reached a town called Otok. In there, we were, um, we, we, she brought a few little, little tidbits like chocolates and stuff like that, coffee, you know, to visit older people. And she said, I actually, I actually visited an older lady and I got some information out of her about her wedding dress. And I was like, okay, cool, right? Now, wedding dresses weren't white folks, right? So um, I said, okay, and she said, she, um, she's very old, and she goes, and her daughter's old too. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, no big deal. So we got to the door, hello, you know, oh, Lublanche, and you're from Lublanche here, right? So of course, coming to the kitchen, and some of you kind of know exactly what this feels. You sit in the kitchen, and they, you know, they serve you, and this and that, and, and the, the daughter, who was up in age, said, I'm gonna get mama ready, and what's gonna happen is, um, then, then you'll come in, you'll have some coffee, and then you go and see her, all right? And I said, oh, I go, um, is your mother bedridden? She goes, she hasn't got out of bed in years. Like, out of years. Okay, no big deal. Um, so we had our coffee, and um, many of you know, well, my relatives had it, and many of yours do. In their, in their kitchen doors had like a, like a frosted window, right? You could see somebody coming in, because you know, you leave your door open, the neighbors come over. And somebody came to the door, I thought, oh, the neighbor came over, and I thought the daughter was gonna have a heart attack because of the fact that her mother got out of bed, put her earrings in, okay, and she shuffled, you know, I brought her over, she sat beside me, and her daughter just in awe, and, you know, we had a chat. She goes, she hasn't got out in years. And I said, oh, I said, uh, is it okay to get out of bed? She said, well, I had people from, visitors from Ljubljana here, I definitely needed to come to the kitchen to visit you. <laughs> Shocker number one, right? Now I started getting into, uh, right, asking questions and that. I was asked to grab something out of the attache case. It was a watercolor about this big. Now, it wasn't exactly like this, but it looked very similar to this one, right? And I was asked to show her, and I, so I showed it to her. First of all, I was in awe with the watercolor, and then, then she looked at me. 
She grabbed me on the shoulder, and to this day I remember, she said, Anisim Lepa, was I not beautiful? How can you not do this for a living? <laughs> that made such an impression on me that it's like we need to keep a heritage going in regards to a lot of this. Talk to your old people, talk, talk, because we've lost a lot of absolute great information because we never asked them. Or they may have forgotten, and then suddenly they remember. OK? Um, oh, all right. Um, very quickly, I want to touch, uh, we're going to go down to Dolinska. And the thing with this one is these are actually Germans. Ah, around Kuchevia. Did you know they existed? Right? You know a lot of history, but most people don't, right? There were a lot of Germans that were moved out because of the war, right? There was a lot of Kuchevia. And again, they had their own so called costumes. They have actually also reconstructed this. I had no idea until I'm going to say, well, you know, 20, 20 odd years ago, right? Because I've already seen this picture over here on the side with the man, right? But I didn't know what the women's were like, and then they start popping up, right? Now we go to Dolenska. Anybody from Dolenska here? Anybody from that area? Okay. Dolenska was a, also not researched, and then many years ago, um, many years ago, um, uh, Branka Muskon, who is actually from Bela Kraina, Branka started a dance group in Novo Mesto, and they wanted to dance dances from Dolenska, and what did they do? They, they wore a Dolenska costume. And they said, we need something of our own. Nobody could tell them what the old costume looked like. So what did they end up doing? Looking at frescoes. You go to the churches. Everything was, the, the, the clothing, the clothing was what people wore. That's what the artists did. They wanted people to associate with themselves to the frescoes or to the, to the paintings going, ah. So they took that and created, recreated linen skirts, white, right? Bodice, mala pecha, pecha, right? Well, look at that. Mala Pecha. Go figure, right? This is actually one of the one of the a painting that was done. People used to put in, you see this in uh, many old uh, pilgrim churches, right? People used to go and they would ask Mary or whoever the saint was for, for offerings, please this, please that, right? And if this happens, I'm gonna I'm 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 paying you back, right? My grandfather did this for the war. He basically made a deal with God and said, if I come back to my family, I will put up a cross on my property. That's exactly what he did. People went, made paintings many a times. And what they did with those paintings is they would bring them to the church as a thanks to St. Mary, to whomever, in regards to that. And those are giving us a little bit of historical background. All right? Um, again, there's that red vest that I'm talking about, sometimes lined with black, Sometimes, yeah, black. This is all made out of linen, right? And the, the group uh, from Cres, ironically Cres, from Novo Mesto, is the one that started, because they're from Dolenska, and everybody took that version for all the others, right? However, these are the newer Dolenska costumes. Or, right? Now consider, right? Gochamaica, skirts, check that out, right? This uh, group. Um, as well, ironically speaking, I was, teaking, I was talking to my priest, uh, Dr. Uh, well, doctor, pardon me, um, uh, Drago Gachnik, Reverend Father Gachnik, who is from this region. And I was saying, hey, I saw this group uh, you know, from Dolenska. They had the, all these costumes. He said, yeah, they're my nephews and nieces. And I'm like, seriously? He goes, oh, yeah, they did all this reconstruction stuff, right? And again, if you kind of look, look at the petticoat underneath that, right? Different colors. They weren't always the whites. Oh, and a pecha. Some of the most pictures that were recorded were from Dolenska. And there we go. There's those frescoes, right? These are the paintings on churches. Check that out. No longer in Dolenska, East, uh, Western Starska. Wait a minute. But there's got to be a distinguished. There was no borders. People wore relatively the same thing. So consider what they're wearing. All right, very similar. All right, oh. But this is also Western Starska. These two from, uh, everybody know where Logarska Dolina is? Up, up, right? This is another place I like to recharge in. These are old watercolors and drawings. And this was actually, I believe, from around Vilenia. They started getting black and whites. And again, a lot of the dance groups actually started to, um, find black and whites and reconstruct costumes from there. And then watercolors were made. 
This book is out, Dr. Maria McCarthy. She did a lot. I've only put this one there. Um, these watercolors I got to see about a year after they were done. And they were like, why are you so interested? And they were really great about it. They were great. They let me go through them and all of this. Um, I'm going to tell you I was on my honeymoon. I have a really accommodating wife. <laughs> and when I went and I found out where they were, they let me go through all of them. And I said, OK, I'm going to take photos of it. Or you know, can we do a, like, like, a photocopy? And you know, no. They said, if you want to go to Valenia and take copies, like go somewhere and get color copies, you can take them. <laughs> you, you problem, like, you, I didn't do it because it's like, you're trusting me to go somewhere and bring this back? You don't even know me, right? I would do it, don't get me wrong. But these are actually on display all the time. And a lot of groups, this is a student from Maribor that actually has these. Um, I have enough material, my wife won't watch this, I have enough material to make probably 10 couples of this in my basement at the moment. Yes, uh, yeah, all right. And again, some copies. Oh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of fabric in the house. <laughs> a lot. When you find on sale, you buy. Yeah. All right, we'll leave it at that. Um, old, old belt from Western Stariska. Now we're in Zilia, Koroshka. Short skirts. Chris has something like this, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. <laughs> Now, even though they may not, as, well, some of them associate with themselves with uh, being Slovenian. Others have been kind of Germanized. They will never say that they're German. And that's kind of under, whatever. It is what it is. All right? But they have kept traditions alive. Stichwanje is still alive where uh, boys or men on horses would actually, um, this is put in the village. And then there is like a wooden barrel that's put. And then they hit it but when they run or they have the horse gallop. And then they hit it. You can actually see this on, there's YouTube videos on it, right? And they hit and they hit and they hit. And then it eventually explodes. And then, of course, this is offered. Right? Most people go, oh, it's the victor. Oh, no, it's not the victor. It's whoever the girls actually like the most. So what then the, all the boys come back or all the men come back with these like clubs, right? And you know, trying to get it, and somebody would like hold it, hold it out. And if you didn't get it, they would, you know, and when it was the right person, it would go in. And of course, he was in charge of the dance under the linden tree. Repud Lipo. OK? These things still exist. These traditions still exist. If you plan your trip to Austria and Slovenia at the right time, you might be able to see all of this. So you can actually see there were a lot of pictures that were taken with them, right? And the girls. Of course, they have to hold the horses. Yes, of course, you know. But there's a lot of old costumes that still exist. And these that are there, that kind of shows it. Flag bearers, right? I like this chap. This chap is not having a coffee. You know that. He's at a, still not having other things. He's just chill, right? With a coat. When you analyze what he has, he actually has something here, something hanging here. And that actually goes, it's a cap that goes over his head, and then his cap goes on, right? Right? Now, that is actually common for Gorenska as well. OK? So you know, we're used to like you know, the night before Christmas and the caps and all of this. The same idea with the, ta right? with this, like, tassel on the end, right? These people are proud, right? Yeah, you know, my, this is my partner. You can tell that, right? Kind of idea. There's the, there's the tassel, right? He's not, he doesn't have one. But look at her headdress. Can you imagine women wearing that now? I'm going to lose my hair. It's called a pintel, right? And it's actually made of like organza. So it's very light, all right? And there is a book made for Zilia from Dr. Maria. Now, this book was actually written in both Slovenian and there's another book written in German. Because the populace speaks, a lot of them speak German only, right? And if you look at the back, um, You'll notice who actually spoke to her. And they, sometimes they uh, will say the name of the person and where, they, where they're from. And many a times, people wanted to be, uh, they, didn't, they didn't want their name associated with, so they didn't want anybody knowing that, you know, their background, right? But they, she got a lot of information out of them. Yeah, I debated about this one, but I thought I might as well show you the, the right? It's not crinoline, it's petticoats. It's petticoats, it's petticoats, it's petticoats. It's petticoats. Women wanted to be wider. My, my daughter would be like, why? 
Sometimes they would put cotton or, or wool in their socks to make them look manly. They were strong. They could farm. They'd have children. That's what it was, right? Um, this is actually a reconstruction. A friend of mine sent me that. He goes, what do you think? This was done during COVID. He made it during COVID. Um, check these belts. These belts have gone from one, like, down uh, through generations. These belts are done out of uh, quills, out of uh, goose quill, right, uh, or turkey, right? And it's all embroidered. Um, you can get these made now, but you have to have a lot of euros, <laughs> right? <coughs> this is Rosh, which is also in Koroshka, a lot different. They, they have a, looks um, somewhat reminiscent, again, to that Alpine um, way of thinking, right? She's wearing a different kind of albiza. This is a chelik on the top and it's flat on the bottom or, or in the back with some embroidery and a very long ribbon she ties onto it. Again, trying to cover that head. <coughs> Same idea. They also wear hats or, or klubuki, women. And there you go. Various styles there. Reconstructed on the Slovenian Koroška side. This is for weddings. And then every day, every gray dress. That some group, some dance groups actually reconstruct that way. All right. All right. Going to Primorska. This is from around Gurica. All right. Now we start getting into some embroidery. We start getting to silks. All right. This idea, this costume was almost lost as well. A lot of it because of the war. Right? Uh, a group in um, Piran, actually, of all places. Um, this picture took me a while to refine. Um, they did a, an incredible job reconstructing. A lot of people have done so much to bring things back that is great. All right? When you look at these, I don't know if people would actually associate this as being a Slovenian costume. This is Upper Socha Valley. This is more of the town folks, all right? Where um, not only is it wide for the women, of course, but it's also to the point where there's multiple petticoats. There's actually one that is always um, a different color, okay? Uh, his vest is also that red, but it, it's actually wooden buttons. Like they're wooden long buttons. They look like pegs in this case. Many dance groups have done those. But there's everyday wear, and this is everyday wear. This is the group from uh, Student, from Maribor. I pillage a lot from there. <laughs> great people, like absolutely great people. Um, this group is from Bovets. This is Razor from Tolmin. All right, all reconstruction. Um, the one I want to talk about Tolmin, the, the interesting thing about them is not only that they did a lot of research, but one of the women's daughters, uh, Jana Dolenz, actually has done all the watercolors for all the other all the uh, publications, she never thought she would be doing costuming. So what happens is they would interview someone and then they would take those words and then she would actually make a, a pencil drawing and then she goes back and then they make alterations to it. Like There is actually a system in place. Um, a lot of those watercolors are then owned by the, the groups themselves. We're going to go to uh, Pononska and this one's going to go, all right, this is from Brezica. So right across the Štarska dolinska border, so if you know where Brigitte's are, okay. Um, these were all reconstructed because of watercolor. All the groups want their own, group, uh, own costume, and sometimes there's no, there's no documentation. So they take a watercolor, they take what they know, um, and away they go. It's, this, this doesn't go from that to this within a month or a year. This takes a long time to start to do, okay. Um, we are now in Štarska. Western, or oh, pardon me, Eastern. This is what people associate Eastern Štarska with. You know that blue apron? That blue apron is, is most people think East Štarska. My grandfather was uh, from East Štarska, and he wore an apron underneath all the time because he was working, right? You know, you're not going to get your pants dirty. You're going to get that apron. Right? Most people are like, aprons, men, men don't wear aprons. Of course they do. That's a work, right? Anybody know what that's called? We don't have any Štarska here, right? It's a shirts. And sometimes, right, 
You'd fold it up. Why? Because I want to walk or I'm going to go dance. I'm not taking this off. I'm just going to fold my apron. Right? If I'm not going to take it off, I'm just, yeah, there we go. It's all good. Um, Sunday wear. I love this picture. This is, like, this to me is, right? Slovene dances were described by the National Geographic, no word of a lie, as being some of the most romantic dances ever. Traditional dances. Most romantic. Why? Because there was this connection between the man and a woman. Even dance groups, it's kind of hard, right? But, you know, it's always, it's always like this love between the two. You, didn't, you know, they may be friends. It doesn't mean they're anything else, right? But it's that, it's that interpersonal play. It's not because of the, it's showing that, all right? I love that photo. This is what I know, right? These regions were poorer. Everyday wear. Work on the field. Here we go. Oh, look at the aprons, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah, there we go. Okay. And this is what we know as, right? These are like everyday, what would be called everyday wear at one time, what people would wear every day. And now we're talking about white linen pants for men, white linen top, vest. Women, white, white, right? White blouse, white skirt. Then eventually we get into cottons. Um, these are reconstructions. These are some of the oldest reconstructions that were done as well um, around Ptui area. Um, linen, all linen. Um, various groups did those. Now consider that. If somebody walked down and you'd say, what costume is that? Oh, I don't know. It's Slovak, Hungarian, Slovenian. Do you all say Slovene, by the way? Do you use that word, Slovene? You're Slovenes or Slovenians? I have to ask. Thank you. Someone... In my, in my, and I, we're going to learn to disagree. It, for me, it's, it's, it's Slovenian. I'm Slovenian. I'm not Slovene. <laughs> this is from Markuzi. They have, re, they have reconstructed these costumes in the last, I'm going to say, 10 years. Um, simple. Now, now we're back, now we're to bodice again. Now, it's on a bodice now, most of them, right? More examples? This is from Verge. This group, if you ever see them on YouTube, phenomenal group. Phenomenal people. Most people are phenomenal. But these guys are exceptional. Now, these are reconstructions from Lance above us, um, as well around Ptui. There, is a lot of, uh, there was a lot of reconstructions that were done, or a lot of research that was done around Stariska. And um, I'm going to be very general here. A lot of it was very similar to each other. There wasn't a lot of differences, but all groups want to be somewhat different. Um, you may not be able to see the blouses here, but the blouses here, I kind of remember these kinds of things that the older women would wear. To, you know, right? These are a, like a form of kochamika, but it's not, and it's all covered, right? Everything is covered in this respect. All right? All right. I'm going to have to plug this in. We're dying here. Maribor, this computer is going to die. I still have one more reason. What do you think? Can we do that? Awesome. All right. Where do we go? OK. Uh, the other thing that's found a lot, and a lot of uh, this has started to come up, a lot of these small little white um, rute, they're called now rute, right? But page, small pages were actually brought up. Um, women used to wear these. Uh, they weren't as heavily, they're small, and they weren't um, as elaborate, but they are as elaborate. And um, sometimes they were used for um, the, you know, like a corner if they had a cross, and they would put it as a pratichik, like as a small little embroidery thing. And through the generations, nobody knew. They just said, oh, yeah, Stara Mama had that. My grandmother had that, right? And they were, then they realized going, no, sh like they used to wear that on their heads, right? So a lot of these things have kind of came up, right? Some of you might be familiar with these, right? These are also, they're, they're, people call them silk, but they're really not silk. These, these are still found in, um, some, some people still have these. My mother remembers her mother having these. And then they went missing, kind of idea, right? Later on when my grandmother passed away, she wanted to get one. And she said they were already gone. Um, but women used to wear these for Sunday best. Uh, we're now in Bela Kraina area, but not really. We're in Costel. Costel. 
Kostelski Fantje are a group of, uh, of men who have become very popular in Slovenia for doing traditional-ish tambora music. They actually started with the dance group. Okay, um, and they were taught with the dance group. And this is where this reconstruction started. This is what they went by, the basis of it. Check out what, how she wore a pecha, like koza, like a goat, right? I say it affectionately. I don't say this in a bad way. But the embroidery on this, some people said, well, they didn't want to do this because it may look very southern, right? But this is what these were all about. This is actually, um, a, we, I reconstructed this costume um, in Hamilton just because no one had it. And we wanted, I wanted something a little different. The amount of people that have helped with this are great. But now this is like Bela Krajna proper. Okay, so most people associate Bela Krajna with Zen and the Yuri. Um, you know, um, and this whole idea of, you know, tambura music, etc., etc. And these are the most common costumes, all in white. But now we adorn them. We want to make them look better. We want it flashy, right? That's the thing. I kind of showed this picture before. These children actually went to Vienna, right? You know, the emperor needed, everybody needed to be represented. So they put these children in these costumes, and this is what they did. Now, there's some adornments here that people would not have done. But this went back into culture, and most people now think this is how we wear it, so that's how we wear them. And there's different, you notice there's different, Girls are wearing different things here, right? They want to represent the whole clientele. And then you have the two towns of Mitlika and Chernomna, right? And they're also known for dance purposes. There's, there's certain things that they do, and it's an all-white costume. Wow, that's a lot of women. All right? Now, this costume is what most dance groups kind of went with. This is considered to be, this is going to be incorrectly said, not an for Belo Kranci. Right? Pripraznostna nosha. All right? All white damask, big pecha, tied like a rabbit or in a flame, like that. This is Chernomle, Metlika is like that. Why? Because we have to have differences, right, between the two. Okay? But when you asked older people, is that what you did? Nobody remembers that. Right? We go to Polyanska Dulina, which is around Stara Kolpa, or Stari Turk, which is around Polyanska Dulina in Bela Kraina. There's a Polyanska Dulina in Gorenska. All right, this costume was also reconstructed, and look how different this one is. All right, still Bela Kraina. Now, here's one for you. The bottom of this skirt, there's a reason the lines are there. It's because the women used to do something called Kishpanya. All right, you have to realize that they are influenced by the, by the South, and what women used to do is they used to go to the river and wash their clothes, right? Every, that's not foreign to my, many people. But so what they would then do is, of course, get rid of the extra water. You with me? I'm trying to do it. Then they would lay it flat, and then they would take it, and they, so you got to consider that they would throw it up in the air and literally hit it on a rock. What happens when it hits the rock? It doesn't go down flat. It actually goes like an accordion, like, right? You have to consider. It gathers in the ends. And that's how they used to wear their skirts. Because the original skirts actually had ribs, and then you couldn't get the fabric anymore. So what do you do? You do this, and you get the same effect. Most people would be like, can you imagine somebody like on a dance group doing that and be like, you didn't have time to like iron your skirt? <laughs> right? <coughs> and these, you have to also realize, there's a lot of variance in these costumes. Um, it's not just, and I've got, I've got a, a Prekmoria one here, but Bella Kran is very similar to this, right? Um, linen pants, linen top. Belt of some kind. Belts weren't thick, by the way. Belts were like who could afford a thick belt, right? Belts thin, right? Oh, actually, vests were allowed. Women again, some adornments that that come in here. Men actually also wore these tight, these tighter pants. This is also uh, military influences. This is why this came out, right? And then you get this. There's a lot of this happening now. These are very simple embroidery, but people forgot about it. They found them again. And here we go. So I'm just going to kind of flash some of this. This is from Mitlika, around Mitlika. Now, can you see the ribbing? That's the original material. You can't see this embroidery from far, but when you get close, you can see it. Right? Do 
different head coverings. This is from Dragotush. This group actually has, um, even though it's a white costume, it's a little more modern. And what I'm going to say is, the bottom of this, this is actually Yana's uh, reconstruction. You can't see it because it's white on white. There's actually a, um, pardon me, there is, it's um, like a ribbon, right? Um, like almost like, not, it's not bobbin lace, but it's lace. That goes all the way around it, and then there's a lot of pleats. You won't notice that until you go closer. This is actually made, this apron is actually made of very fine material. When I asked them what, what kind of material, she goes, shirt cotton that men wear. You know the white shirt cotton that has things in it? She goes, that's what we made it out of. It was a little bit more modern. It's still white, but a little bit more modern, right? And kind of like, oh, you learned something. A group from Vinica, great people. Show, yeah, great people. You won't see the embroidery until you come close. But this is simple. If you go across the border into Croatia, theirs are a little bit more elaborate. So people are like, oh, but theirs are nicer. They're nice. Ours are nice, just as nice. You have to know the background of it a bit, right? Now, this is quite unique. She actually wears this. Now, this head covering, Puglauni, is um, a head covering that was actually in Croatia. They used to wear it on the top of their heads. There. Here, the woman used to just cover the back of it. And she would only wear it for one year, from the time she got married for one year, and then she wouldn't wear it again, right? Here we go. Just more. I'm just going to kind of skim through them. There is a modern costume, okay, ladies and gentlemen, that are found in Belokrain. Most people say this, oh, pardon me, that these aren't Belokrain. See, these are Belokrain. See, it's actually a Cherna Nosha, or even though it's not black, which kind of refers. But this is modern, right? Um, most people started wearing costumes or clothing like this. In Belokrain, here's another one. From the villages of Boyanci, there is a, hmm, there are people that, um, can consider themselves, they're Orthodox, okay? Eastern Orthodox. Uh, some people say Croatian, Serbian backgrounds. Okay. They also brought a form of costume in, and that's where we get this apron from, all right? And if you go down to the Dinaric area of Croatia, most of the costumes have exactly the same apron. And some people still have the antiques at home. All right, this is a near and dear one, and a, all right, this is Prekmurja. I'm not going to tell you my mother is in the, right, in the picture on the right. I'm not going to tell you that. I'm not going to tell you that. All right, but what they ended up happening is this, no one did any reconstructions here, so something was created, and then this was created with a top and a bottom for women of the same, and then possibly something around the head or kerchief with that color. And then the colors got wilder, and then they got polka dots, and they did all of that. And the men, of course, had linen and linen with a black jacket. It's because they had no idea. And then, then they started creating their own thing, right? And then you started getting variants, and things didn't fit very well, and they did, and they started adorning it, you know, because this is now all Right? They were still under Hungary for the longest time. And then they started adding this a little bit of embroidery putting in there. But is that traditional? Not necessarily traditional for the region. Okay, I'm going to tell you this is more traditional for the region. Something very simple. Okay, But I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to, I have to show you this. There's actually a picture here from 1868. Somebody sent me from Beltinci. And this is an old photo of what people wore. Simpler. Do you realize women have boots? Oh, okay. Um, the Ethnographic Museum actually has some pieces that are traditional from there that aren't necessarily reconstructed very much so. And then this is where we go from the evolution of that to that to that to that. These two are the same group. Oh, pardon me. These two are the same group. Young people. That young generation was awesome. However, these were also paintings and etchings from Prekmurja. So these types of costumes were then created. And older ones. And I'm just going to kind of flash through them. It's 
If someone's online right now and sees that middle picture, I'm in deep trouble. <laughs> beneath. But women used to wear things underneath, right? This is from Porabia in Hungary. And we're almost there. All right, here we go. Primorska. Two different types of costumes. One's alpine and one isn't. There's a lot of mix. This is called mandrierka, mandrierska. So she's on a bodice. So this is an Alp alpine one. The Slovenians in Italy are instrumental about keeping this identity alive. They used to have um, a wedding that was done once a year. It's, it's kind of rare nowadays. And everyone, the amount of people coming in, folk, like actual traditional costumes and reconstructions would blow your mind. Right, the pride that they show uh, in that. All right, but there's also that one. That's Mediterranean. So this one is um, called the Shkedenska Nosha, um, Istarska Nosha, and we're going to get to that. I just wanted to show you the richness of the Mandrierska. Okay, L a lot of wool, a lot of silk, a lot of colors. She has a band of color underneath. Now there's a bit of uh, someone who's unfortunately passed away told me. Um, Gave me a, um, a research document that they did with the group Stuledi from Trst. All right? um, and they went from um, village to village. And he told me straight out, each village had their own color combination. Most people say that doesn't exist, that women would buy whatever, whatever colors they wanted. I believe more that there was actually a distinction between the villages. Because I actually spoke to a few people who are of Croatian descent, and they said along the coast they had the same thing, so they knew where people were from. Okay. Um, but again, these are all reconstructions. We did these in Hamilton. These aren't somebody's clothesline. Absolutely, like this, the amount of detail here we, is really hard for us to see. This is all ribbed. So the one in the middle is actually called a Bovelska. And this one, no, they don't know too much about. Um, I've got some material to reconstruct that. The embroidery here is exquisite. It means something, too. Uh, there's a tree of life, is what they call it. And all the swirls mean things, and colors mean things. There's a lot of, like, there's a lot of things that could be researched in regards to that. And people have done that. However, we're going to go to these. These are the actual Mediterranean ones. I don't think we've really seen these costumes in North America. Okay? And this one's actually considered this to be like a, hmm, for lack of a better, like a housecoat. It's open in the front, and then you, get, you put it on. All right. However, there's one that you put on one way. This is layer on top of layer on top of layer on top of layer. OK? So these are some examples. Very thin layers. Like, so this is a very thin cotton or very thin linen. Um, I kind of like it. It's, just the, the, it's coming through in that regard um, through the right. But again, all of the embroidery that is there. All right, so here we go. You all set? This is worn first. These are all, this is all uh, crocheted, okay, all the way down. Then you put on, these two are the same. Then you put on the spune kamizot, and this has lace along here, and then embroidery and all of that, even on the cuffs, such as this, such as this. Then you put on zgorni kamizot, which is actually all, it's all put together. So they sew it all together, they wet it, they dry it, they wet it, they dry it, and then they pull it apart and you get all the little ribs, okay? And that's put on top of everything. So she is wearing uh, three layers right there on top, over there on the, on the top there. And then she puts a pitch on top and then she puts a pitch on there. Talk about layers on layers on layers on layers, all right? These are examples of the, of the one that's on the, fr uh, on, the, uh, on the top. White, black, and brown. Many, uh, there's still a lot of, not a lot, there's some of these kicking around. Women wanted to get buried in these. This was their funeral dress as well. They wore it all, their year, you know, all those years, right? Um, so there are, the museum in at Copa actually has these. Um, that's where this is from, but you can see the absolute embroidery and things that, that they actually created and all the, like all the embroidery and that's all done by hand. That's not, that's all done by hand, okay? And then if they had some money, they wore a turka, 
which is a Turkish silk shawl on top. And if they had money as well, they would wear this on top, which was a short waistcoat. Layers on layers on layers on layers. And then they tie the pitch in a different ways. Now here there's some money. They have rings, they have earrings, they like some jewelry would come. Not everyone had money, by the way, but right? And the embroidery here, trio life. Right there. The lace is super fine. Another example. Just some examples. I calculated I have over 3,000 photos at home. OK. Before we get into two, and I'm going to get into Narada Nosha and Charna Nosha real quick, this area I put under here, if some of you know the area of Rizia. Rizia is a little bit of a, interest, a hot potato. And it's a, either appreciation and affiliation, uh, appropriation, if, if people understand that whole thing. Um, many Slovenian, um, uh, Slovenians did a lot of research in Rizia, and they also concluded that the language was actually a form of Slovenian, a, like a very archaic form of Slovenian. They also say that it's also an archaic form of Russian. And, and Serbians actually say that it's also a, for, like, everybody wants a little bit of a piece of this one. But the truth of the matter is, um, if you listen to a uh, Rezian, I've actually listened to a Rezian who actually spoke, and you can kind of catch some words, and you kind of go, yeah, okay, I get it. Now, the reason I put this here is a lot of the dance groups in Slovenia actually do Rezia because it is so different than what we're used to. It's not accordion. It's all about violin and bass. And these are also very much about like a house coat type and very simple in, in their respects. Very nicely done. Very nicely done. If I played Drezia music for you, you would all look at each other. And then after about an hour of listening to it, you'd say, this is really cool. I like this. All right. You familiar with the Chirna Nosha? So now we're getting there. This, to me, should be the national costume of Slovenia. Why? Because this is derived from Slovenian background. People took things, and then they went from there. The most, uh, the most popular thing about this is that it is not, well, it's black. Black was a favorite color. Okay, and the, but they don't always have to be black. They can be dark colors. This is where this picha now it changes, and it becomes. Um, I said it before. It's kilos. Um, it's um, yeah, yeah. But it's also it's actually a very thin um, tool, cotton tool. Okay, so it fits beautifully on it. Loved wearing this. Men would wear suits. Women would wear this. Okay. And you can still find people wearing these. And the act, this is, this is form fitting, ladies. All right. Um, the first ones that were really reconstructed for a dance group were Franz and Marov because they wanted to dance in Zagreb, in the Smotra Folklore, and they were not allowed to dance unless they did home dances. So they had to do this. And ironically, the, um, the leaders, uh, Mirko Ramosh, he had his grandmother's um, dress at home. And they used that as a basis for reconstruction. He said that they tore the pitch apart when, he was, when they were kids. He remembers that they tore it apart. They were pulling on it. All right? But this is what happens. Right? The lace was actually, this was all finally done. There was ladies that would actually make money off doing that. Right? Because consider, you needed two women to actually do that. And this is the actual... I'm going to tell you there's one on the table in the front, which is gorgeous, all right? But, ladies and gentlemen, you're used to this. You're used to Narana Nosha, Gorinska, Pripradnostna Nosha, all right? Consider this. A lot of this is antiques. You can tell some of the stuff was made. The Vyachke were made. There are things that were added to this. Here's another one. You've already seen that one. This is where we start seeing things that are funny. Skirt links start going up, shoes get more modern, big earrings, big fluffy hair, all of that. But ironically, when people were getting married, the, the dress changed. Men still wore suits now, but the dress has changed from old to this, but they still wore a picha. They kept that part. Ironically, the hardest part they kept. Some of you have these old, old silks. Where 
we're at the end. Sorry. There we go. So I'm going to I'm going to leave you with a few little words here. You realize how people change things. Skirt materials started getting different. Like people started doing things to make it. You know, they they gave their own taste, right? Or, you know, who cares? I want to see my hair. All right. This is in Kumnik. No disrespect to the people because they go every year and they've got a treasure trove. But you realize the way things are worn sometimes, especially for kids, and the way things are worn sometimes, that would never happen. No one had that. All right, things were added. Um, I don't have it in the slideshow, but there's, uh, Gaspari actually had, somebody, somebody gave it to me a few days ago and I just couldn't put it in the slideshow because I forgot. And it said, Nipra Vilna Gorinska Nosha. And it's actually very Germanized. Right? Alba is German, folks. The Alba is German. Right? Pecha is Slovenian. All right? And this is what groups are doing nowadays, right? Okay, let's make one of these. Now, I kinda, hopefully I showed you a few that are simpler, in, right? Groups start, this is, uh, this is an influence by costumes. I don't know what they're going to be doing with this. It's a little bit dangerous. But why don't we make things the way they should be, possibly? These are my kids way back when. That's my dance group when they were young, way back when. Again, they're probably all going, oh my goodness, if anybody's watching, going, I don't believe he's showing me this picture. All right? And then if you're going to do something, this is my last one. Right? Keep it simple. Right? Simpler. Simple. Good group from um, Wazada. Um, absolutely great. Um, they've done a lot of reconstructions as well. It's about this interaction. The rest of it just shows you off. This is a family in Boyanti that has costume. Still very proud of it. This is this old man. And I'm telling you, if this 18-year-old girl, well, she's not 18 in the picture. She's turning 18 on the 16th. It's my daughter. If she knew that she was in this slideshow, dad would be, dad, let's get to find out. All right. Um, for a Sunday, how to get her dressed. And she goes, it's not what everyone else wears, dad. And I just said, no, we're just going to go with basics and what, right? And this is what. Is this wrong? Not at all. I'm going to tell you. And I'm going to leave you with this. She was actually paired up with Mrs. Tesnik, who is still very much alive, in a, of course, in a retirement home at the moment. Mrs. Tesnik actually donated her costume for us to keep in our, in our closet of the dance group, because that way it's somewhere. And she took my daughter's hand. And this was the old, old generation and a young generation walking in. That meant a whole lot to me. She grabbed her hand. My daughter was pretty, like, you know, she's kind of resistant with people, or was when she was, when she was young. She's sassy now, by the way. Um, you know, she grabbed her hand. They walked in together. They were the couple for that mass, let me tell you. I don't know who was prouder, my daughter or Mrs. Tesnik. And when I asked Mrs. Tesnik about her costume, I said, where did you find it? Oh, Tosum Dubila, Tosum Naridvili. This is where I got it sewn in Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> There's a lot of affiliations between this area, even North America and Slovenia. I told somebody a, a story. As you can tell, I got a gift of gab, and I'm full of a lot of stories. But um, a, a, a dear friend of mine who we've kind of reconnected sent me pictures of a pecha that her grandmother had. And uh, she said, I'm going to send you pictures. You, you might be interested in this. And, and of course, I am. And she said, don't worry. I'll get you more, et cetera, et cetera. And they said, so this got handed down. She goes, yes, it was my grandmother's. And I said, where's your grandmother born? She said, Cleveland, Ohio. I said, what? And, and she said, yes. Uh, her parents moved to Cleveland. She, they were here for a little bit of time. She was born here. And unfortunately, the weather didn't agree with, with her father. And they went back to Slovenia right? and made a life back there. So this pecha went from Slovenia to North America and then stayed here. And someone sent it back to my friend and said, this was your grandmother's. I want you to have it because you can cherish it. I know you'll cherish it. And I said, do you know that I never knew that your grandmother was born in Cleveland? It took a piece of fabric. It took a piece of fabric that most people think are, is inconsistent. Like, who cares about it? And what ends up happening? It has a story. And I think there's a lot of stories on some of these tables. Keep the stories alive, folks. I know I'm way over time. I don't even want to know how over time I've gone. But hopefully you've got something <laughs> out of it. I am here for as long as you have any questions. Um, the one thing, I don't know if it's on here, it's probably not. It is. If you're interested in any of this or reading even more, um, you're not doing, I don't get any kickbacks from Facebook, trust me. All right? If you want, Slovenska Lutska Nosha, I was told that this was wrong to put that, but not, it's not. Or Slovenian folk costumes in Facebook, 
I keep getting notices they're going to close it down. If they close it down, I'll reopen it. Um, if there's anything that you want, reach out to me. I am more than an open book, as you can tell. <laughs> so in a way, I apologize for the link, but hopefully you got something out of it today. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right. Two hours and 25 minutes. So thank you, everybody, so much for joining us here today. Please go ahead and welcome. Uh, you're welcome to take a look around the museum. I wanted to give you a preview. We do have many events left in our calendar for this year. One that I want to specifically highlight to you is that on Friday, we'll be having an exhibit opening here um, in person, but also a recorded premiere online of what you see up here today, Plietschniks, Lublana. And um, so come on back on Friday. And we have a number of other events throughout the calendar as well. Check out our website, clevelandcurrentsavania.com, uh, for all the event info and details. And thank you guys so much for coming today. Come and out next week for the parade. Come on next week for the parade, too, on Saturday. And keep coming out. <laughs> this is, it's, it's because of you that these people, I know, volunteer a lot of time. But these people find a lot of passion in what they do. Um, the more you support each other, um, again, you know, this is how we keep what we know of our traditions alive. Um, three weeks ago, I went. I was fortunate enough to be invited to a creation seminar, um, and again, it's folk dancing, and there's a lot of back and forth, a lot of similarities, especially with this region. Um, Ivan Ivanchan used to teach the uh, group Lado from Zagreb, which was a professional group, and when I was introduced to him, unfortunately, he already knew who I was. I was a little worried. And we have a lot of people that we know, uh, including my professor, Mirko Ramos. And he could not speak any more highly of this man. He just said, legenda. And the more we spoke at the end, there were so many young people at this. At this. Now, I'm going to tell you, in Hamilton right now, we don't have much going on. There's a lot of, COVID did a lot of disastrous things, unfortunately. But there are people that are keeping traditions alive. And we're doing what we can. But I was so moved by these young people at the end that I had to tell them, I know your parents forced you to come many a times. I was forced to go dancing the first time, by the way, right? And I was eight. Dudes don't dance. <laughs> and then my mother, being the typical Slovenian mother, said, you're getting in the car now. <laughs> and then every single cousin I had and every single friend I had and new friends were all there. I, I, would, I would probably not lie if there were 80 kids. And then we, I had a group of friends more that were in the Slovenian community than even high school. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I had friends and then I had friends, right? And that's kind of all gone now. But anyways, with these Croatian kids, I said, you know what? If you keep this alive, you see, yeah, they, they had yeah, this man that came who was a wealth of knowledge. And I said, you don't, you don't know how good you have it until you lose it. And then I did what I did now, but I cried. <laughs> Keep going. I'm sorry. Um, that's it. Thank you, everybody, there for coming. <laughs>